guys, this is Dr. Simone, and I hope you guys are well in this COVID-19 pandemic. I know we're all trying to stay safe, but I wanted to come and talk with you guys about um, wearing masks and wearing them safely. Um, you know, some people are opting to wear masks, some people are not. They have their different beliefs. I don't argue, I just know that um, uh, wearing masks, you know, for eight hours is not going to decrease someone's immune system when they have 16 other hours of the day that they're getting blasted by every microbe in the air. Um, so I am okay with wearing a mask and I think it's not to just to protect myself, but to be considerate of others around me, especially those that might be high risk as well. Um, I am not having to go out much because uh, I am high risk myself. In fact, I try to do most things at home um, and not access the hospital uh, because it's it's not very convenient to to do that right now. They're they're very busy uh, with COVID nineteen patients, and they are. I can also put my own self at risk, right? So I have been doing um, IVs at home. There's a sterile kit to access my Metaport. I'm sure you guys are seeing this little paper above my um, above my shirt. But I have a Metaport in because I was feeling a little under the weather. I didn't want to go to the hospital. Just aches and pains. Um, and um, I sterile accessed myself. Part of that is putting on a mask. So there are these uh, masks, these uh, surgical masks that come in the kit. And so because of that, whenever I open a kit, I have a surgical mask. Now, don't ask me why I didn't open all the masks and donate them to the hospital. Because if I open every kit, they would no longer be sterile and they have to be sterile in order for me to put this needle into my heart. So um, so I can only open them one at a time. But each time I open them, I do I do get a, um, a mask that I can use. Now, I'm hearing about, you know, it not being uh, a good idea to wear the mask because people are touching their faces more and people are not wearing the masks correctly and so the mask could be putting people at increased risk. And honestly, I am inclined to agree with them. I am a mask wearer and I advocate, you guys know that I advocate for wearing a mask, but if you do anything wrong, it will have the unintended effect. So if you had blood pressure medications and you didn't take them right, then you would continue to have high blood pressure, right? If you have a mask and it's supposed to protect you from COVID-19 or the, the coronavirus, um, and you don't use it properly, then yes, you're going to continue on to get COVID-19. So you do have to wear the mask uh, properly. And it is concerning what I'm seeing in terms of, you know, leaders. I saw um, a briefing on TV where someone was um, saying that they're a mask wearer. They're not wearing it right now as they're talking into the microphone, but they always have the mask with them and they reached into their back pocket and pulled out the mask. Now, here's the thing. If you are wearing a mask, you have to assume that there are viruses out there, like coronaviruses, and that they are coming at you, right? And so this whole surface is going to be contaminated. So the way you want to put on your mask is you're going to hold this. You're going to hold it by the air hooks and you're going to put the, put it on, okay? Now... Then you're gonna adjust, and there's a nose wire that you can adjust to the contour of your face, and then you're gonna use it. Now, because we don't have a lot and we have to keep reusing, we have to now consider how we can get maybe one more use out of this mask, right? So when we come home, 
we first have to take out the mask again by the air hooks, okay? Remembering that the front is going to have the virus. So you don't want to touch the front. So what you want to do is actually approximate, you want to put, close it where you approximate the edges and the contaminated side, that blue side, is, is now on the inside. And then you want to store it in either a paper bag or a Ziploc bag right and you put it in like this and then you zip it up and you leave it for another time now I will tell you that uh, my husband is an essential worker and so he has to go out every day I don't want him using a mask and just putting it here with the coronavirus inside of it especially since it's it is a disposable mask and I know that someone will probably write me and tell me that this is wrong, but this is what we've been doing. We've been actually using alcohol. I put a sprayer on the, on, on the alcohol bottle and we just basically put it at a distance and we spray it. And we just make sure that we, you know, we just let it dry. And then once, we, once it's dried and it evaporates very quickly, very quickly. Now, once it's dried, I feel better in folding it and putting it into uh, my Ziploc bag, right? And then when you want to take this out, now you're going to take it out again by the air hooks, right? And it's going to open up and then you're going to find the, the right um the right part for your nose, the right orientation, and you're going to put it back on. Now, one thing that I, 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 one step that I missed is before you do that, before you pull it out, you want to sanitize your hands, right? Even when you're taking it off, you want to sanitize your hands before you take it off and, um, Sanitize your sanitizer. I'm not doing it because I don't want to waste the, the hand sanitizer, but you want to sanitize your hands, right? And then take it off, put it into a Ziploc bag, and then sanitize your hands again because you want to assume that sometime at, somewhere in the handling, something got on your hands, right? Even though this one was sprayed, I will still sanitize my hands after I put it in there. And then I, because we have a few of these, we can label the, the Ziploc bag one, two, three, and four, right? So that way we can give this four days to just hang out, you know, kill off any, you know, viruses that are, you know, still wanting to hang out. And then we, then we can come back to using this one. Um, now most of us aren't, you know, aren't using this. Most of us are using, and let me put this, let me put this someplace. Oh, and the, here's the other thing I wanted to mention. My eye actually caught, um, what I wanted to tell you is people are also washing these by putting them in, uh, designating like a, 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 a glass a container and putting them in and putting hot water they said that um hot soapy water can you know can sanitize it but the water has to be 70 degrees 70 degrees celsius or higher well boiling water is 100 degrees celsius so we know that we're safe there so we can pour hot water and have that soapy hot water um, in the in the container for 10 minutes. And they said 10 minutes in the soapy hot water will kill every germ, right? Now, if you feel like, oh my gosh, maybe you got cooler in 10 minutes, I could, you could put like a, another, like a basin over it, pre prevent it from getting cooler quickly. Um, and you can, um, also another option would be you can pour off the water that you had 
and pour some more boiling water and let that sit if you were just you know um you know tendency to ocd so um you can do two rounds of it just to be sure that all the germs um were off but um but the hot hot water is good enough to um uh, sanitize it um the soapy water is just added and it also will um clean the um it might break down some dirt that's on it uh one video i saw also used um a soft toothbrush and just um just kind of brushed the surface of um mask and then turned it over and did the same uh so that's optional right but we are in unprecedented times once upon a time i would use this and then just throw it away now we can't afford to do that because we need them for long term we need a lot of things for long term so and we don't have enough of them so we're having to consider all of these things and then before using it again examine it to make sure that in the process of cleaning it it didn't drop a hole or you know there wasn't some uh, place that was you that was thinning so that you know that you can use this safely right now what we're using is none of this right right now what we're using is we're having to make our own masks right at home I'm I'm, I'm no seamstress but uh, I had to, you know, make masks for myself and my husband who is an essential worker and needs to have, you know, many masks. We, we got all, you know, we, we have multiple because just like I said, we want to be able to give them some breathing time and before using it again. So that way my husband doesn't have to wear the same thing every day he can leave it in there so it can you know get nice and decontaminated by the time he comes back we label it one to four and that way he can he can just rotate right um but this is what we're having to deal with and so what i would recommend is i know you know whether you it's a scarf or whatever if it's something that you're just going to you know, toss in the laundry and wash it with hot soapy water, fine, that's great. But if it's something that you made like this and you um, are able to remove the filter, then remove the filter and, um, and then uh, wash these in uh, hot soapy water in the washer and then you can uh, dry it with high heat as well and then you can put back in uh, your filter but when you're putting it on please put the top part on first just get in the habit of doing that and I'll show you why and then you put the bottom on right okay now when you're removing it right you have to figure out a way this is all considered dirty this is all coronavirus you don't want you want to minimize your touching of it right so first again you're gonna sanitize your hands right and then you're going to take down the bottom one first so it's still hanging upright and then take down the top one okay now there are a couple of options that you will have all right, so this is the this is supposedly the clean side. So you want to hold on to these and then you can hold the clean the clean flip it so that the contaminated side is on the inside, okay? Um my husband and I we know that it will break, probably break down the material a little quicker, but we also sterilize these um what i do is i have um alcohol uh swabs um or alcohol little alcohol pads and so i will just put them on the surface and take the alcohol pads i have on gloves and i will just wipe you know wipe the the front of it down and um and then pick it up wipe this uh the uh, spray this surface with alcohol 
right? And then turn this down and wipe the other side down. Um, and then I will put, put it on the side of the coronavirus side and put it in to my uh, Ziploc bag. Now, when you take it off, you are, you can just fold it, right? And stick it in. I mean, look, life is busy. So, you know, yeah, you're going to sit and think about this. But then once you're putting this into action, you're not thinking, you, you know, you're thinking about this beforehand. So by the time you're actually having to do this, it should be it just in your brain, right? And so you might just want to rehearse, you know, a couple of times. Like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to fold it like this. I'm going to put it in. I'm not going to spray it with anything. And I'm going to just put it like this and I'm going to keep it for a few days. And then when the time comes, I can wear it back again. I can pull it out by the strings. I can, um, I can, um, I know which side is front and back. And if you want to label, you know, which side is front and back, that might be a good idea because something like this, it can be difficult. I have to go to the top and I know, um, the angle of the, um, the wire uh, for my nose is what tells me what's front and back. Um, also, there's a different um, stitching of the thread, so I know it's front and back. But outside of that, it can be difficult. So if you can label, you know, what's front and back for you, that would be great. And then just put it someplace safe. You don't want to just, you know, put it down and then you don't know which is front and back. Then, you know, or you're taking it off and you're taking it off like this. This that's the stuff I'm seeing on television. You know, the reporters are, are talking, right? They're, they're talking and they're doing like this and this. And I'm thinking to myself the whole time, please decontaminate yourself somehow before you reach and touch your phone or reach and touch your equipment or brush your hair or whatever else, fix your clothes. You know, any of those things can then cause... Um, uh, contam cross contamination. So yes, they are correct that if you improperly wear a mask, you could put yourself at higher risk. But if you improperly do anything, you could put yourself at higher risk. So try wearing the mask. We are in unprecedented times, and it's not your fault that you don't know how to wear the mask in a reusable fashion. No one stood on a podium and showed us how to wear a mask and re in a reusable way, how to take it off, how to store it, and how to take it back up again. Anything you see, even on YouTube, is mostly how to, majority, greater than 90%, is how to safely remove a disposable mask. Well, we're not in a disposable season. We are using things over and over again. And so we need for somebody to step up and show us, you know, okay, I am a nurse. I am a doctor. I'm from the CDC. I'm from the World Health Organization. Somebody to be able to say, listen, this is what you do and this is how you do it. Until then, this is what I'm doing. And I think that that's probably going to spare you uh, contamination. Please do not stick it in your pocket or, um, or, or fold it and put it in your purse because you should be assuming that you, con you came in contact with coronavirus. In fact, that's the only way that will give you a heightened sense of caution so that you would use it properly. If you're walking around think, thinking you just covered yourself for protection and now you're home and everything's okay and there's nothing on this, you're going to be tempted to use it the wrong way. So please keep in mind that there is a whole world that we can't see. And in that world, there are viruses. There are viruses around me right now and I can't see them. So they will touch your mask, whether it's COVID or any other virus, they will touch your mask. And if you want to keep yourself healthy, you don't have to be afraid. You just have to be informed. And I hope that this was helpful. 
Have a great rest of your week, you guys. Take good care, and I'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye.